It's day 85, and today we're going to look at sessions in Flask. So the thing about the internet is that HTTP, which is the protocol that all website traffic moves on, more or less, I'm simplifying a little bit, but the protocol is what we call stateless. Now, what that means is that it doesn't remember who you are. You can ask a question to a website, it can respond to you, but your follow-up question that website is not going to remember what you asked previously or even who you are. It's a little bit like trying to have a very deep philosophical conversation with a very small child who just wants to ask you the next question in the series. So if that's the case, then how have I spent my entire life buying things online? YouTube remembers me. And in fact, there's this massive worry of privacy with being followed from computer to computer. Well, the reason why we have that existential dread whenever we go online is because of sessions. Sessions are a way of storing files on your computer that allow my website to keep a record of the conversations and the information that we've been sharing so that I can easily identify you when you ask the next question. What this means in practice is that if we use sessions, we can store information about the user on their computer that we can then access later. This is very, very handy if we're writing something like a login system because we can save the information on the computer that says we know who they are. And when we ask for it, we'll get it back. By default, a session is active until the browser closes, but we can adjust that. Let's start by importing all the classics and see if we can get sessions going. The first thing we need to add to our import is adding session to it. And that's session singular, don't get caught out. And once we've defined our app, we'll need to define a key for the session. Now, this is a way of encrypting the data that is stored on the local computer. And this is really important because if we save information about our user to their computer, we probably don't want them to be able to see inside it and change that information. One of the things we need to define is app.secret underscore key. Now, that really should be something long and meaningful and difficult to guess and probably shouldn't be in your source code. So, what we can do is bring up our secrets. And I'm gonna define a session key. Now this could be whatever you want it to be, it could be some text, but I'm just gonna type a load of old nonsense in which are gonna be really difficult to guess later on. And what I'm going to do then is bring that in. We'll just run that to check that works okay and we can see what's going on and if i run it we don't get any errors and everything seems to be working what we want to do now is take a bit of information in from our user so what i'm going to do is bring my file tree back up create a file with a form in it and import it bring in a simple form all i'm going to want to do is set the name of the user in this session now if we would just set this as a local variable the moment the user navigates to another page we lose that information by setting it in the session, we save it on their computer. So when we access it later on, we get the same data. And that's really, really easy. Let's define a page that allows this to work. The way we set our session is just like we'd set a dictionary value. Session, and then in square brackets, the name of the dictionary value. In this case, I'm gonna call the key my name. And I'm gonna set that equal to the submission from the form user back to the home page. Let's see if that works. So if I set my name as David and click save, it redirects me back to the first page. Let's see if we can pull that session data out and show it on the screen. Now we need to change a few things here. First, we need to load the name. We set it to blank first of all, and then we use a simple if statement to see if it's set. This avoids issues where we're getting null data or the absence of data being pulled into our page. By using plus equals in the syntax, I'm actually appending to the page, which is hopefully going to add the name to the beginning and then bring the form in later on. So what I've done here is added two things. I've added an if statement to check if that key actually exists. Just like the normal dictionary, if I try to pull a key that doesn't exist, it is gonna crash. So if session.get will check to see if that name exists before I pull in the variable. I can access the variable normally, just like I can with a normal dictionary by using session and square brackets to access it. And I'm also using the plus equal syntax to append data. 
let's see this work, but you might be shocked to see what happens in the mini browser. So first of all, it doesn't look like anything's set. So let's try it. Hmm, interesting. Now, the funny part about this is sessions work on a per browser basis. The mini browser here is having some trouble maintaining a session. So the only real way to test this is to pop this out into full screen and use it here. And you'll see I've set it to David. And if I want to set it to something like Sean, I can and it updates. Now, every time I refresh that page, I will get that detail. If I close it and I go back and open it again, I'm getting that information from the user's computer, which is a great way of working because I can save information now on the user's computer that I can access at any time. On all of my pages, I can simply check to see if a key exists and then pull it in. And I can store information that's important for me about that user on their computer. One important thing though, is that these are essentially cookies being stored on a user's computer. And sometimes we need to delete them. One thing we can do is delete these cookies completely, but we need to have a method of doing that. I'm going to create a button that forwards us to a page that will do that. In my form, I'm gonna add another button, which is just a button in this case. And I'm gonna use a little bit of JavaScript to change where we're going. Now we just need to set, decide where to send it. I'm gonna send it to forward slash reset. And if we refresh that here, the reset button should take me to forward slash reset. Now that page isn't found, which is exactly what we want because we haven't built it yet. Let's get back into our main.py and build the app route for the reset page. So what I've done here is written a subroutine that clears the session. That is, it reaches into the user's computer and it deletes the data that I've stored there from this website. That means next time I check, I shouldn't see a name. Stop and restart the server. And let's look at it in full screen because remember that's how we need to test it. And if I reset, the name disappears. I can set a new name if I want to, and I can change it. But if I reset it, it disappears. And this is great because sometimes you do need to reset information on a user's computer. And in particular, if you're logging them out. So we've looked at creating a session, setting a session value on a user's computer, retrieving the session value and clearing it. That means you've got plenty of understanding about how a session might work. Remember, if you're generating or saving any information about a user that you want to use on a different page, the next time a user comes to visit, you need to save it in a session or that user's information won't be available to you. Now this could be something simple like just setting a value like I have logged in on the user's computer or it could be saving their user ID on the computer. But either way, that session ID can be used then to look up the rest of the information that you might have stored in a database. Common problems with the sessions? Well, there aren't that many because it works just like a dictionary. The most common problem though, is not keeping that secret key secret. If I go here and I type in a secret key in text, then that is not secret anymore. Anyone that has the secret key can decrypt and read what's in the sessions data stored on your computer. Now just have a think about the security implications of that. If I have set your user ID on your computer and I'm reading that every time you access it to make sure I get your exact data, then if I can go in and I can change that user ID on my computer to something else, I could get access to somebody else's account. So the encrypted part of it, the fact that we need that session key to be hidden from the user is why you need to use secrets in a REPL. It means that anybody that's running your REPL can run it perfectly fine. Anybody accessing your website can access it perfectly fine. But if anyone forks your REPL or goes in to view the code, they can't see what your secret key is and would never be able to get access to it. What happens if I forget to set a secret key? Well, let's have a look. You'll see straight away, it can't actually save anything to the session. So a common problem as well is not setting that secret key. Lots of introductory websites online will talk to you about Flask sessions without making it really clear why there's a secret key there in the first place. You need a secret key, otherwise it won't let you save anything to the computer of your user. As usual, I've broken some code, go take a look at it.
Your challenge today is very, very simple. Go and get your login system from yesterday. Put it in here. What I'd like you to do is extend that login system so that when a user has logged in, you use the sessions value to save their username to a sessions dictionary on the user's computer. On every page's app route, I'd like you to add a check to see if the sessions data has been set for the username. If it hasn't, I want you to kick them back to the login screen on any page at all. I'd also like you to add a logout button, which clears the sessions data and kicks them back to the login page. You should not be able to go to any page other than the login page unless you are actually logged in. Test this out on a few browsers to see how it works. Close it, open it, see how long a session lasts. Get used to exactly what a session is. Tomorrow is our first big web project where we get to store information persistently in the cloud and use sessions to store information persistently on your user's computer. It's like we're building a full-on website. Thank <music> you.